Hello everybody, welcome to the Great Maker Show and Tell. Today we are cutting out wood on our Cricuts. When I first got a knife blade from my Cricut Maker, I designed and cut this 3D family tree out of basswood. But what if you want to make a more personalized wood project, like letters, names, and monograms? You can. Wood letters and words are great for signs, home decor, puzzles, decorations for wreaths, and even cake toppers. So, as you know, I love to experiment and find out what works best. So we're going to do a little test with both basswood and balsa wood, which are the two woods that you can cut on a Cricut. And we're going to try to do these on both the Cricut Maker and the Cricut Explorer using the knife blade on the Maker and the deep cut blade on the Explorer. And we're also going to try to cut out both cursive letters and sans serif letters to see if it makes a difference. Now it's not difficult to cut wood with the right settings. The bigger challenge is usually finding the right wood in the first place <laughs> um, and then being patient enough what to wait while it cuts because it's not typically a fast process. Our projects will take anywhere from about 10-15 minutes to up to an hour. But good things come to those who wait, right? And as far as finding the wood goes, I found mine at my local Joy and Craft store. If you can't find it at a local store, check online. I put links below this video to help you find some. Okay, so let's head on over to Cricut Design Space where I will show you exactly how to cut out a cursive name, um, also how to make a sans serif name puzzle, and how to create a lovely monogram. All right, so here we are in Cricut Design Space. Click on New Project to get started. The first thing we're going to make is a name, a cursive name, right? So I want you to click on Text over on the left and type in whatever name you want. I'm going to click in, uh, type in my name, Maker, but you can do whatever you'd like here. Um, and make this a little bigger. Now you don't want your text to be too big, but for now we'll stick with about eight and a half inches. Now we need to change the font. And this is, you can pick pretty much anything you want, but you want to avoid anything that has really skinny parts. And you're gonna probably want a single layer font, right? So if it's too skinny, then it, there might be some difficulties cutting it out. You want to generally keep all of your lines, all of your cut lines, at least in a pencil eraser thick, right? So nothing too delicate is going to work here. But there's a lot of choices here. Now, anything with a price next to it means it's going to cost extra to use. So pick what is appropriate to you and your budget. And I am picking a font that I have installed in my system and it's called Michelle Script. I will link it in the, down in the video and in the tutorial if you like this. Um, and I want you to click on Advanced and do Ungroup to Letters. Now, once we've done that, we can manipulate each of these letters individually and put them where we want. And I'm gonna kind of put them in a more calligraphic manner with uh, some more variation in height just like that, which I think is really pretty. All right, so I want to add a heart to this, so click on Shapes and click on Heart. Now obviously you don't have to do this part, I just thought it would be fun, make her heart, right? So I'm just resizing and rotating the heart and I'm gonna put it right at the end of my R as if it just comes right off at the end, just like that. Once we have everything the way we want it, Oh yes, double check that everything is the same color because sometimes they won't be. Once everything is the way you want it, select everything and then resize it to be no more than 10 and a half inches wide, okay? That is the limit for the Cricut, um, either the Maker or the Explorer. You could do a longer word on a longer mat, but I don't currently have a longer mat, so we're going to just stick with 10 and a half inches wide. So once you've selected everything, go down and click Weld. And then click Make It. And that's all there is to creating the name. Pretty easy, huh? So click Continue. And then you're going to click on uh, your uh, Cricut. Browse all materials. And search for basswood because we're gonna try basswood first. So basswood 1 16th 
of an inch thickness is what I used. Now there's a note here that says move star wheels all the way to the right and make sure material is no wider than 11 inches. Okay, so we're gonna do this. First, I want you to look at your basswood and look at the grain of it. This matters because the grain of the wood, is, it's more likely to break along the grain of the wood. So with our letters and the way that we've structured it, we want the grain to go exactly the way I'm putting in the board. So this is the long way. But your design might call for something else. It kind of depends on where your little little parts are. You know, are they going vertical or horizontal? And so once you've determined the grain, you wanna you want to tape your piece of basswood to your strong grip mat. I'm just using painter's tape here, that works fine. Masking tape is also fine. But make sure it's taped. Okay. Now we're gonna use my maker and we're gonna use the knife blade. This is the knife blade. And we're gonna put that right into the mechanism. I'm sure it has a name, I don't know what it is. <laughs> the clamp, we're gonna put in the clamp. And then these are the star wheels. I've already moved mine all the way over to the left, but you're, if you haven't, you're gonna to want to. You just need to um, slide them over. They can be a little stiff, so just work at it until you have them all the way over. And this is important so that you don't mark up your wood. And make sure that you've got enough space behind your machine always move mine out a bit and then I'm gonna load my mat and we're gonna get started everything's taped down good to go I always check this you don't want little little bits of tape sticking up that could like get caught in the rollers and gum up the works so when it's ready click the flashing cricket button and it will start and I'm gonna give you a close-up shot of the knife blade at work because I think it's cool to see how these things work. So there you can see it. See the little gear move at the top? And so the knife blade changes direction based on the cut. So because it's not just a little point, it's actually a little, like a, there's like a blade with a particular edge on it that's very, very sharp. And that's how it can do this. It's really pretty awesome. Of course, this is also why it tends to take a while, so it's going to take 24 minutes for me to make this project, which isn't really so bad. It's gonna be 14 passes, it says. And while it's working, make sure, this is important, make sure that Cricut Design Space stays open and stays as the active tab in your browser, and you should use Google Chrome. That's what Cricut recommends, and that's what I also recommend. If you need to go do other things in your on your computer, just uh, go use a different window in your browser. If you are doing other things in your browser, the Cricut might stop getting the directions from your computer and there'll be a pause. And if that happens, usually you can just go right back to the Cricut Design Space tab and it'll start working again. But generally speaking, the advice is to keep that tab active while it's cutting for the best results. So this project has 14 passes, which means it's going to cut it 14 times, right? So each time the blade goes a little deeper, right? And this is how it does this. This is how it gets that really fine detail. So when it's finished with its predetermined passes, so in this case 14, it will ask you to check your cut. And this little box will show on your appear on your screen. So we're gonna go over and we're gonna look and see how it's done. So, I mean, it sure looks like it's cut, hasn't it? It looks nice and deep. And if you look at the center of the K there, you see that right there? It looks like it's even raised up a bit. Oh, <laughs> in fact, it like pops out at one point. So it's right there and it sure looks to me like it's cut through. So we're gonna pull this off. Unfortunately, I was wrong. <laughs> I was misled by that little bit. And as you can see, it had not cut all the way through. Thankfully, it's cut most of the way through. So what we do in this case is we take our handy craft knife. I have the Cricut True Control knife. And uh, working on the front and the back, we just trim up those little bits that are kind of still hanging about and clear it off. And here it is. And that looks pretty awesome. The basswood is really nice. It's, it's plenty stiff enough. It feels like wood. It doesn't feel flimsy. Okay, but what about the Cricut Explorer? Can you do it? If you want, if you'd like to try this on the Cricut Explorer, I want you to go to the menu in the upper left-hand corner and click on Manage Custom Materials. 
select your Explorer, and then scroll to the very bottom and click Add New Material. Add, give it a name, so uh, Basswood. And I want you to set this, these uh, settings here. First, select the deep point blade, then change it to 234 pressure, cut five times and click Save, okay? Now let's give it a try on my Cricut Explore Air 2. So we're gonna do this what, like, just like we normally do, find our basswood, and we're going to put in the deep cut blade. So it's this black housing right here, and move over the star wheels just like before. Make sure everything is taped down just like before. And we're gonna try cutting it out here and see how it does. And if you watch it, it sure looks pretty good, doesn't it? Nice clean cut, I'm not seeing not seeing any issues, I can totally see the cut there. So here's what it looks like when it finished. <laughs> and as you can see, it only cut through in one spot. So let's try this again. This time, let's put it on balsa wood. Balsa is much easier to cut. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add a new material. We're gonna call it balsa wood. 1 16th of an inch. So it's the same thickness as the basswood. And for this, I want you to select deep point blade, a pressure of 220, and cut four times and save that, okay? And now we're gonna give this one a try and see if balsa wood cuts better on the Explorer than the basswood does. Do not change your pressure, by the way. Okay, so this is what happened when I tried to cut balsa wood the first time on my Explorer. It's a mess, <laughs> and you can see the star wheels the side totally dug in. Yeah, that did not work. So I tried it again, and this time I mirrored it so that the, you know, the wheels wouldn't mess up the front, and it did a better job. I also used a brand new mat that was super sticky. So the combination of the new mat and mirroring it seemed to make a difference. So, and I was able to um, pull this one off the mat you can see here, it's mostly, you can just, I'm actually just kind of pushing it with my fingers and I was able to get it out. All right, so here I wanna compare these two. At the top is the basswood I cut on my Cricut Maker. You can see it, it's actually pretty sturdy for a thin wood. And then the bottom is the balsa wood that I cut on my Explorer. It feels very, very flimsy. You would definitely want to be putting this on a backing, like, you know, a board or something. Um, it seems very fragile. They're exactly the same thickness, 1 16th of an inch, which is the maximum size, really. Um, in some cases, you can go up to 3 30 seconds, but generally speaking, 1 16th of an inch is the maximum. So you can cut out balsa wood. Uh, the maker is, of course, doing a better job. Okay. Okay, so let's try another wood project. Let's go to Cricut Design Space, click on Shapes, and click Square. Click the Unlock button and widen this into a rectangle. So this will be about the size of our sign. It's about nine and a half, ten inches. This is going to be our name puzzle. And then I want you to duplicate this so you have two copies of this rectangle. And then click Text and type in the name that you're going to want to use for your puzzle. And I'm going to type in my daughter's name, Alexa. All right, so there it is. Now you need to place it on top of your um, backing, you know, so the board that it's gonna be on and use the resize button to make it about the size you want it to be. Okay, so I'm gonna move this down just a little bit so that we can see it. All right, so let's change the font to something appropriate. Um, the key here is to use a multi-layer font. You can find them by clicking on filter and choosing multi-layer and this will make all the difference in our ability to make this name puzzle. Um, there's, you know, again, the ones with the price next to them will cost extra, but the Cricut, uh, the Cricut fonts, like the Cricut Craft Room font, uh, is free. So if you want to change the line sp letter spacing, just click the little down arrow in letter spacing. Make it so that it looks good. You don't want the letters too tight, or, you know, there might be not be enough space for, um, you know, when you cut it out. So make sure that there's plenty of space in between, but it still looks good. And when you're satisfied with it, go over and 
to the text and you'll see that one layer is hidden and one layer is not. Make both layers visible by clicking the eye icon and then click ungroup so we have both text layers of this multi-layer font. One of these layers is bigger than the other and that is the trick to doing this. So then I want you to drag the smaller version out and then duplicate it. And then I want you to select the board and the larger font and click slice. Okay. Then we're gonna get rid of the parts that we don't need. So we don't need this, so we'll delete it. And we don't need that part. And we'll delete that. And now we're left with exactly what we want, which is, um, let's change the color of this. So this will be the backing of our puzzle, our name puzzle, and we're gonna change it to like a darker wood. This is the front of our name puzzle. Let's change it to like a wood color, a light wood color. And then we'll also change our, our font to this exact same color. So the parts in the light cream are going to be cut out of the wood and the part in the dark brown is gonna be cut out of chipboard. So here you can see how that works. And by using a multi-layer font, we now have space for these letters to go into the puzzle because if they were too tight, it would be difficult to uh, put them in and get them out. So we're giving it a little extra room. And then I want you to click ungroup to letters on both of the names. The reason why we're going to do this is because then when we go to cut it out, Cricut will put the letters into a more um, size conscious format instead of just having it all just whatever it'll take less wood in other words all right so we click make it and here is what we're going to be cutting out um, I want to move these owls down here because you're not supposed to have any material larger than 11 inches according to Cricut so now everything is within 11 inches on our mat and this will cut out just like it should this is the chipboard layer and this is the basswood layer. So click continue and choose your Cricut. Click browse all materials. Search again for basswood. So we're going to cut this out of basswood. It's definitely the better material than balsa. Balsa is crazy flimsy. All right. So just like before, we need to move the star wheels all over to the right. All right. So we're going to cut this out on the maker. Same thing as before. You were going to use a knife blade. We're going to have our star wheels all the way over to the left. And this project is going to take about an hour to cut out. Um, so, and when it's at the end of an hour, it's going to ask us to check it just like before. Well, this time we're going to be more careful, aren't we? <laughs> and we're going to make sure it's actually cut out before, because if it's not, we have the option to cut it some more. Right, and we want to do that as much as possible because that minimizes, you know, us having to clean it up. So here it is, after its final pass. And while you know it looks like it's cut out, I can't tell. Right, so let's take the tape off and see if we can, you know, manipulate these letters down here at the bottom and all. I mean, it doesn't really look like it's free, and if you look at it from underneath. It doesn't look like it's cut all the way through. So it looks like it's really close though. Yeah, see it's not moving at all when I push down on it. It's still attached, at least by a few fibers. And that's enough for me to want to do another cut. So we just click that C again, and it will do another pass. And you can keep doing that until you feel it's ready to go. I ended up doing it three more times. So here is our cut project. I'm gonna take this off the mat. And it did a lot better than last time. <laughs> we that those extra passes made all the difference. So there were just a, just a few things to have to touch up. Um, the L's, for some reason, the L's were a little bit harder to get out. All right, so now you know, set aside the big letters that came out of the middle and keep the smaller letters letters. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna now make this name puzzle right? We're going to cut out that chipboard so it's going to be the same size and we'll put it underneath the, the, the backing of the puzzle, right? So you see it there. And we're going to use uh, wood glue and we're going to glue each of these letters together. So the A with A, L with L, E with E, etc. And just a little bit of, you don't need to glop it on. If you do, it'll just squirt out the sides. It'll be a big mess. Just a little bit of glue and just go through 
and do it. And the reason why we're doing it, we're doubling up like this, is because, I mean, while basswood is definitely a lot sturdier than balsa wood, it's still, you know, a pretty thin wood and it's only one sixteenth of an inch. By doubling up our wood like this, we're going to make it a lot sturdier and it's not going to be accidentally broken in little hands, right? These name, name puzzles are very popular with kids. So we want to make sure that they're, this is sturdy and something that's going to last for a while. So doubling up really makes a difference. I mean, you could triple it up if you want, but I think doubling up is just fine. All right, there we go. And of course we have to glue our chipboard layer to our wood layer as well. And you could of course, have, instead of using chipboard, you could just use another piece of basswood. That would be totally fine. Um, but the chipboard is really super sturdy and it's in the back, so eh, who cares? Let's just do that, right? But if you have the basswood there you, and you want it to be all wood, then go ahead and use that. I happen to have a bit of chipboard laying around that I needed to use from another project that was just going to waste. So I thought this worked out pretty well. And there you go, just put it on the back, hold it to press it down, make sure that it's um, you know pressed down while it's gluing. And then when it's good to go, you can just put your letters in, Let's see how it works. <laughs> Ta-da, pretty cool, huh? Isn't that cute? Now, my daughter, Alexa, is 14 and isn't really interested in name puzzle, but we're going to make this um, into a sign for her bedroom. Um, and I still think it looks really, really cool. But imagine making a bunch of those for kids. Wouldn't they just think that was fun? I think so. All right, project number three with wood is going to be a monogram. I had a number of requests for monograms made from wood. So to start, we're going to click shapes and then choose circle. And um, we're gonna make this a little bigger so we can see it and then duplicate it. And then make that second one a little smaller. So, you know, yep, just like that, select everything and click align and then choose center and then click slice. So basically what we've made now is a big circle, right? A big um, ring, I should say, it's a big ring. Now we need our letter. So um, I'm just gonna type M and we're just gonna resize that to fit inside this and make sure everything is the same color. So I mean, this is, this is a really popular style of monogram that is cut out from wood. And it's important that it's every, all your, all your letter is all connected to the sides. And that's the key here. And no floating bits right? So you can play with the font and choose different things that seem to work. This is the same Michelle script font that I used for the first project, but there's lots of other options. Um, again, anything with a price in front of it will cost you money uh, when you go to create this. So use those <laughs> at your own risk. There's lots of free choices. And, you know, there's choices that come free, you know, here in the system. Like this, so this font right here is not gonna be good because it's got these loose bits here that are not connected to each other. Avoid a font like this. You want it to be a solid letter. You know, a solid, your letter should be solid so it, and it, so it touches on at least like three sides and is all connected inside. Otherwise, it'll be loose and flopping around and probably will break, <laughs> okay? All right, so yeah, lots of, lots of font choices. Um, here's one called Bendigo. I don't like this one either because it's got weird cuts in it. Yeah, it doesn't even look good. <laughs> There's really just almost it's too many fonts. You really just want to look online for a style of monogram that you particularly like. I like this one that's very retro, very 70s. <laughs> and, you know, of course, it doesn't have to be just one letter. You could put in all three initials, whatever works. I'm going to show you another way though. So we're going to go over to another web page and we're going to go to, and we're going to go get a free font. It's a very cool monogram font. So we're going to go over to defont.com, which is a resource for free fonts. The font is called Monogramos by Woodcutter. So go ahead and download that. And you see it's got these cool circle 
circles, and I think this is a, this is a very popular monogram right now, and it works great for wood. Um, so download that, and then when it opens, when it's downloaded, click on Open. And I'm going to Mac, so you're only going to see it the way it works on the Mac. I can do a font tutorial in the future. So double click the downloaded font and click Install, and it installs um, on your computer. And in my case, it's installing on my Mac. So awesome. So now we have a cool monogram font installed. Okay, so to use this, we have to go back and refresh Cricut Design Space. By that I mean, put, you know, press the little icon that's like a round arrow at the top of your browser. So that, because it, right now it won't find the font. It has to refresh and then the font will load in. Okay, so whenever you add a new font, you have to refresh Cricut Design Space to get it to come up. At least I do. And of course, when you refresh Cricut Design Space, that means that you get a, you know, you're, you're getting a brand new page. So make sure you save any changes, anything that you want to be saved, because it won't stay the next time you come back, unless you saved it. All right, so click on text and type in your monogram. I'm going to type in JML for Jennifer Maker Lynn. So Jennifer Lynn Maker. And we're going to change the font to the Monogramos font. There it is. Okay, and this is what you get. So there's my J, then my M, my L. But this isn't quite right, is it? We want them to be together. So here's how you create a cool monogram from this font. So select those three circles and click Advanced and Ungrouped Letters. Now each of those is individual, right? Now I want you to click on Shapes and choose a circle. And resize this circle that you created so it's about the same size as and resize the circle so that it's the same size as your monogram and once it's the same size go ahead and move it down so that you can access it easier and duplicate it twice so you have one for each of the three letter the other two letters right so now you've got your three monogram letters and three circles um, move those to the back so they're behind and then move each one into place under each of your letters now select each set and do center so that your monogram font and your circle are set perfectly centered on top of each other. Okay, now select each one and click slice. Okay, so when you slice it, we're gonna get the, all these parts here. We don't need that one, we don't need that one, and we don't need that one. So delete all those ones we don't need and we're left with just this one that we do want. So do the same thing with the other two letters. So click on slice and get rid of the extra parts you don't need. So the part you want to keep is the letters in like a, in this case it's a dark gray, but it could look black on your screen. Awesome, now we're going to learn how to contour. So select one of your things and click contour. Now we want to hide the letters we don't need. So we don't need the middle one or the right one. Ta-da! Isn't that cool? So do the same thing. So for the M, we want to keep the middle. So you hide the left and the right one. And for the L, you want to hide the left one and the middle one. And now we're left with just the letters that we want for our monogram. So we just click and drag them into position. Isn't that cool? Right? So they're all curved and everything. <laughs> Um, so now we just need a circle, a ring to go around them. So we're going to do just like we did before. Click on shapes and choose circle. And we're going to put this in the back so that we can put it behind our letters so we can see it better. So put that into the position that you would like it to be. Maybe, you know, a little bigger, whatever. Make sure that it's thick enough so that um, when you cut it out on your Cricut, it's at least a pencil erasers width, right? Remember that's the rule. And when you have it the way you want it, duplicate it and then create a smaller version of that circle. That's and you want and this for this second circle you want it to be sized so that it's just overlapping your letters. It's just a little bit smaller like this. So that everything is touching there. And when you have the two circles the way you want, you're going to select those two circles and click Slice. 
and then remove the center that we don't need. And then here we have our ring left over and that looks pretty good. Maybe it should be a little smaller so there's plenty of overlap on the letters because we want everything to be touching and then click weld. So this is okay except for that J up there, that's not right. So let's click undo and bring that ring in a little bit more. Reposition it, select everything and click weld. There we go. Now we have an awesome circular monogram that's personalized to you. So click make it and we're gonna make this in balsa wood on the maker and on the explorer so that we can compare directly the two machines and how they did with the same material and the same you know, design. So for the maker, we just go ahead and select our maker and then we click browse all materials and we search on balsa, 1 16th of an inch, right? And then when we put this in our machines, we want to pay attention to the grain again. So on this particular design, we want the grain to be going, we want the grain to be going up and down not because it looks better or something like that, but because balsa wood is very fragile and it wants to break along its grain. So if you put the grain, you know, where a narrow part is, it's gonna break, right? So we wanna put the grain where all of our long parts are. So if you look at our monogram, we have lots of long letters. We want the grain to match those long letters and that will reduce the chances that it breaks. So if, you, if you're following this tutorial, just put your balsa wood on your mat with the grain going up and down. And here's our cut monogram, which went very quick, by the way. I think it was, I don't know, a few minutes. It was very, I was surprised at how fast it was. Balsa wood is so much softer than basswood and it cuts very quickly. At least compared to basswood, it does. It still has a number of passes, but um, not 14 passes. So it cut all the way through without any issues and just take it off the mat very gently because balsa is just so fragile. Just very, very, very gently. If there's any bits left in the middle, just use your weeding tool and pop them out just like that. And there we go. I did a great job of cutting that. I see no issues with that at all. Nice cute little monogram. You can make that much bigger, of course, if you want to use that on a wreath or as home decor. All right, let's try this on the Explorer. We're just going to go back to Cricut Design Space, and this time we're going to connect our Explorer. And we're going to, we've already created a custom material, right? So we're going to go ahead and search for the balsa that we made for our first project, and we're going to use that. And don't change the pressure. Make sure it stays as default. Okay, I know I like to change the pressure, but don't do it this time. All right, so here is what it looked like when we cut it out on the Explorer. So it looks pretty good. I only see, in fact, one minor difference, and that's at the top of the M. Explorer has a little bit of like tearing. Otherwise, it did a great job. So based on our experiment, you can totally cut wood on a Cricut Explorer using a deep cut blade. Now, you might have to fiddle a little bit with your settings, and you should definitely be using a strong grip mat that is um, not old because <laughs> it needs to be sticky enough and you have to tape everything down. And you might want to mirror it, right? Um, if it's a big design that's going to be cut into by the star wheels. But otherwise, it does work and it's actually a pretty clean cut. So the maker still does a better job of cutting wood. And I just I could not cut basswood on my Cricut Explorer, no matter how hard I tried. But it was really quite easy on the maker, especially once I made sure to double check that it had cut um, all the way through. And then just did extra passes until I was satisfied that it was done. So some wood worked and some didn't. And hey, that happens. And just think, I am making the mistake so you don't have to, right? So if you would like to make my 3D family tree, you'll find the tutorial and the design for that over on my blog at jennifermaker.com. So tomorrow we are going to make a paper craft. One of those cute little red Christmas trucks that you've been seeing around everywhere. And if we're lucky, we'll have a special guest on this show too. I'm excited. So be sure to send in your project ideas at jennifermaker.com slash show and tell. Your ideas mean so much to me, and this is how I come up with what we're doing on our show. 
Um, and remember, of course, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until tomorrow.